Hi there, this is Pastor Ashola here and Doris Famelusi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging content that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a sound. What a sound. What a sound. Hallelujah. Let's, let's sit down so we can do some Bible study. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, thank you for your presence. That is just tabernacled in this place. Oh, what did we do to deserve such a presence? But we thank you. We love it. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't know what is happening. But I like it. And I want more. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to be a little bit of a different fresh fire tonight. You know how many people know that fresh fire, fresh fire can come in any dimension. Amen. Somebody say, I've come for fresh fire tonight. It has already started. It has already started from the worship. It's so different. I don't know. There's just something about that worship. There's something that has brought us into this atmosphere that we're in right now. It's just awesome. I don't even want to leave. I don't want to leave it. I don't. I just feel like we should just stay there. Just stay there. It's amazing. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so let's just bow our heads as we pray for the word. God, we thank you for your presence that is already in this place. Tonight we have come into your presence so that you can touch us like only you can. And so that you can encourage us like only you can. And so that you can teach us and admonish us like only you can. So we thank you as we go into your word. Because we know that your word is so much, it's just power. Your word has the potential to heal us. Your word has the potential to change us. Your word has the potential to, to transform us into that man into that new man that you want us to be it, it has the potential to bring hope into our lives and into our situation it has the potential it has the potential and so we we we, we lean lean into your word tonight and as we study tonight father open our our eyes of understanding give us at knowledge tonight and wisdom tonight and enable us to be not only hearers but also doers of your word so that we can be blessed in Jesus name amen and amen and amen hallelujah please look at somebody and tell them 160 30 amen amen so this is 160 uh, 60, 30 part 2 and we're just going to go through Matthew chapter 13 and bring out some wisdom and some teaching from there and see what Jesus has been trying, was trying to teach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people, a lot of people love, there are some people in this church that are actually good storytellers. I've encountered them and I've, you know, been around them. I've been your pastor and I, I know that you're good storytellers and it's, it's nice when they're around. And they when they're talking, they, they're good story. They present really well, and it's amazing. It's, it's lovely when anointing meets with oratory and good storytelling and all of that stuff. It just it drives home the points. It makes you want to sit and listen. Amen. It makes you want to sit and listen. Not everybody has that charisma, and that's fine. Some people just come and they teach the word. Some people come, they have their own dimension. Everybody has their dimension. But Jesus' dimension was usually to teach with parables. When you begin to read the parables that Jesus taught with, they're so interesting. They make you want to know more. 
They make you want to listen more. Hallelujah. They make you want to think. They, you know, that instead of just, you know, telling you the simple sentence, it goes, it makes you think a little bit. Hallelujah. And some people are good like that. A lot of people who grew up with grandparents are so good at talking in parables. I'm telling you, there's some people who grew up with, they, when they start talking, they will come, they come back way, they come through the back and then they get to the front and you're like, why didn't you just, <laughs> is that where you're going? But that's just how they're used to, they're used to it, they, they grew up, you know, with, with old folk and when you grow up around old folk, you're, you're usually great at telling, telling stuff, telling uh, proverbial stuff, amen. Amen. And so Jesus is teaching, uh, you know, he's teaching the people. And he begins in Matthew uh, chapter 13. It's interesting. And even though he calls it, the, the, traditionally it's called the parable of the sower. But it says, if we, if we can all go there, amen. Matthew chapter 13. If we can have the NKJV or whatever is possible to have, Amen. So the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, just like we're gathered now in his house. You know, now we don't have to be out. Sometimes we can have crusades and all of that outside. But now we come into his, sometimes he teaches in synagogues as well. So like you're sat, there'll be times when Jesus would have been teaching and people are sat in the synagogues and people are sat in uh, places and clusters of places. But this time he was talking to a great multitude, amen. He was talking to a lot of people. And, and he sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he said many things unto them in parables, saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. Somebody say, a sower went forth to sow. Hallelujah. Can you stop that there and bring up Psalm 126? How many people have been able to memorize Psalm 126 now? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Take it away. Remove it for a minute. Amen. Okay, verse 2 filled with an hour then said they amongst the the Lord has done great things for wherefore no the Lord has done great things for us wherefore turn again our captivity they that sow shall reap he that goeth out, bearing precious seeds. Rejoicing with them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor David, were you reading it? <laughs> Let's clap for him now. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's have it now. Let everybody read. Amen. Come on. Sometimes we, you know, the scriptures, I just, we just read them and memorize them. Gone at those days, we used to memorize scriptures. Amen. And the scriptures I memorized before I got married is what is helping me to teach today. Amen. Psalm 126. All those kind of things. All the different Psalms. You know? So it's important that we're still going back and memorizing these things. Now that, you know, by the time you start having children, especially the young ones, you need to start to memorize scriptures. Not just verses, chapters, whole chapters. Do you know it's possible? Hallelujah, it is possible. Amen. Let me tell you something. The trick about memorizing is rep repetition. Amen. That's all it is. What you repeat all the time, all of a sudden... That was why I said, let's change it to this version. So that by the time we repeat it this whole week, it has stuck. This is an easier version to stick. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just pray that you begin to memorize the scriptures. Go back to memorizing the scriptures. Amen. Praise God. 
Right, let's go. Let's read. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that store in tears shall reap in joy. Stop there. Five and six are tied in with our lesson tonight. Amen. Let's go there again. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Six. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Hold those two verses. Now go back to Matthew 13, parable of the sower. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them, make sure you are continuing to sow. Sowing seeds, seeds of love, seeds of laughter, seeds of finance, Seeds of helps, seeds of good works, seeds of time, seeds of, there was somebody, somebody, somebody said something there, all manner of seeds, seeds of smile, yes, yes, hallelujah, amen, amen. Some people say nobody has smiled at me today, who did you smile at? If you smile, people will smile back. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you smile, either the Bible says that a, a friend, a friend, what's that scripture pastor do? Must show himself what? At all times. If you want friend, you too must be friendly. Because I don't have friends, I don't have friends. Are you a friendly person? Amen. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Hallelujah. Parable of the sower. Behold, a sower went out to sow. Behold, a sower went out to sow. Remember Psalm 126 verse 5 says, He that sows in tears will reap in joy. Jesus said, Behold, a sower went out to sow. In other versions, he said, Listen, a sower, it will say, listen. He told them, he said, listen. This is the, the, the first par parable of, of, of the, the fleet of parables that are to come. And even whilst he was giving that parable, he actually did say that if you don't get this one, it's going to be hard to get the others. Get yourself ready to understand what I'm saying. Amen. And so it's, it's, so, it's so good that today we're ending this, this, the, our study today on this particular parable of the sower in a month where he has said that this is our month of reward, our month of harvest, our month of abundance, our month of um, all of those good things that God said to us this month, which we have been experiencing. Hallelujah. He said, listen, behold, a sower went to sow. That means pay attention to what I'm trying to say to you. This is really important. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. Somebody say wayside. And the birds came and devoured it, them. Some fell on stony places. I, won't, I like to use rocky because stony sounds like the second category. Stony, stony. So let's say rocky because some version will say rocky, rock, stone. Some fell on stony. Is that one rocky? It's stony as well. Some fell on uh, rocky places where they had not much earth. And forthwith, they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Somebody say rocky. So what was the first category? 
wayside. Come on, people, Bible students. <laughs> wayside soil. Now, number two, rocky soil. Let's go. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Ah, have we gone to the third category? Go. And some fell among. Hallelujah. Somebody say thorny soil. And the thorns sprung up and choked them. Remember that other parable where Jesus said that the, a man in the night, they went and sowed tears in somebody's farm. And what happened to the, they grew together. They grew together. And when you're sowing, when you're growing something really good, and then weeds begin to grow and mix up the whole thing. You know, how many of you know that they now have to share the nourishment that is there? And so that was what that guy was trying to do to, that, to, the, to the farm, to sow tears so that it will affect the crop, the production. The crop production will not be at maximum harvest. Amen. And the thorn sprung up and choked them. And the thing is, even when you try to remove the tears, even when you try to remove those things, it's so hard to remove that without destroying the actual, the good crop. Amen. Thorny soil. Thorny soil. Third category. And watch out. But others fell onto where? And brought forth, hallelujah, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. And tonight, this is where we want to be. We want to be on good ground. We want to be on good ground. We want our seeds to fall on. Some a hundred. Actually, I went and looked at Luke's account. I went and looked at Luke's account, Mark's account, Luke's account. Luke's account only says a hundredfold. It didn't even say 30, 60. You know, I, he's so brief. <laughs> he's so brief. <laughs> it just said, and they, they, they got a hundredfold. And, but Mark's account actually started, it said some 30, some 60, and some 100. I said, oh, the other way around. That's good. Some 30, some 60, and then the maximum. Amen. But Matthew started with the maximum. <laughs> he said 100. Just in case you don't realize that you can actually get the maximum yield. You can get the maximum yield. You don't have to go for crumbs. Amen. But there's a time when crumbs are good. <laughs> but if there's 100 fold, why not go for gold? Amen. Who goes to the Olympics to want bronze and silver? When, when we get there, and that's what we can get, that's... You know, then we take that. But first of all, you go for gold. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going for the hundredfold harvest. Amen. And Jesus, another place where you, it talks about in the Bible, it doesn't say hundred. Do you know, in the Old Testament, there's only one, one, there's others in the New Testament, but there's only actually one that it refers to a hundredfold. And that was with Isaac. Amen. Genesis 26. Hallelujah. Can somebody, let me see if I, I actually, Genesis 26 from verse 12 to 13. The NLT says, when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted. For the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man and his wealth continued to grow. The Bible says he got hundred times. Let's look at KJV. So Isaac sowed in that land. Somebody use the word sow. Say sow. And then reaped in the same year. Say reap. And a hundredfold. Because the Lord blessed him. Amen. So you see this month of reward thing, this harvest, this abundance we're talking about, you've got to have the blessing of God on you anyway. The Bible says Isaac got a hundredfold because God blessed him. And, and I know this is why we always come to testify. Because we realize that it is God who has done it for us. That we could not have done any of it on our own. Isaac sowed in the land, reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The, and the Lord blessed him. 
the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Oh my God. You prosper and you continue prospering until you become very prosperous. Who was it? Pastor was praying and he used the word very. In one of, there was a time he was praying yesterday morning or the, one, the day before and he used the word very. Amen. Said he prospered and he continued prospering and he became very prosperous. Another three levels of prosperity. Somebody say, I'm flowing in that level. I'm prospering and I'm continuing to prosper and I will become very prosperous. Amen. Amen. But I love how the King James brings that out and says he reaped a, in the same year a hundredfold. So we can reap a hundredfold. Though we got that option of 60, 30, and 100 in Matthew 13, but we can go for 100. Amen. Hallelujah. But it depends on you. So you see this parable, when you look at this parable, as we begin to look at how Jesus explained it, when you look at this parable, you can tell that this parable is actually not just a parable of the sower, but it's actually a parable of the soils. It's actually a parable of the soils. And tonight, the challenge, because it's not, this is not about the sower. The sower was sowing now. The sower was sowing. Amen. Because if we want to talk about reward and harvest, we need to sit where? In the good soil, in the good ground. So he sowed. He was sowing. He was going out sowing. So maybe you're sowing. Maybe you're doing what you can. Maybe you're, you know. But you need to think about these different types of soil. And as we think about the different types of soil, thorny, rocky, wayside, and the fourth category where we want to sit on, good soil. As we think about those, I, I, I want to take us back to how Jesus explained it. Amen. So we're talking different types of soil, and then we're going to look at what Jesus, what that signified. What, how Jesus, what Jesus explained to the people when they went to the inside, when, when the disciples and him got back in. I love how they always went back. Amen. And into the inside, inside. They said, well, Master, well, how did you do this? Well, what do you mean by this? They didn't, all, they didn't tell him in the multitude. We need to learn that. Amen. If you have a question to ask your pastor, if you have a suggestion, if you have a, you don't just open your mouth in the multitude and say, but pastor, this is what I think. They will always go back to him and say, hmm, Jesus, explain this and this and this. Tell us, how is this going to happen? Or how is this going to be? Or how, do you see what is happening here? After they left the multitude, so they too were wondering, what is he saying? <laughs> so whilst he was teaching, they were wondering too. And they came back and asked him, why are you always teaching in parables? They didn't ask him in front of people, why are you always teaching in parables? We don't even understand you. As for me, oh, I think you should teach A, B, C, D. Who are you? <laughs> ask somebody, say, who are you? To tell Jesus what to do. They went inside to go and tell him, to ask him, say, why are you always teaching in parables? Why? They were not afraid. And that's, that's, you, there's a difference between, ah, we can't ask Jesus. There's a difference. They were not afraid to ask him, but they knew where and when and how. Ooh. You know, sometimes, now we'll say, oh, Pastor D is so difficult to approach. Really seriously, difficult to approach. But every time we can go up and do stuff, we can laugh, we can. But when it comes to something that you want to do, that you already know the answer, I become difficult to approach. When you know, you already know. Isn't it, it's interesting. Children already know their parents. <laughs> Children already know their parents. When you already know your mother or father will not allow you to do that thing, you already present a defense and a 
No. Since when did Pastor D become unapproachable? Since when? Since when do I, am I the one that opened your door and told you to come to church today, tonight? Am I? No. Those people that say you are unapproachable, they can't talk to you. They will still tell other people the same stuff. So why will you be talking and then you will not tell me? It's bad. Then you're a liar. It's really not because you think I'm unapproachable because you know the answer. Because you know I won't support what it is. Or you know I won't have it. Or you know I'll tell you off. Or you know I will correct you properly. Instead, you will go to all those people that have no sense, no spiritual sense. So they'll support you in the bad that you're doing. That's not the essence of Christian faith and Christian work. You must correct people. Paul said to the Thessalonians, tell those unruly people. <laughs> he said, and tell, when he wrote the Thessalonians, he said, and tell the unruly people. That means tell people, rude people, unruly people, people who are behaving badly. It's our duty to correct them. Amen. Because correcting you means it's the best for you. We're doing the best for you. I love correction. I do. There's so many people here that have corrected me. The only problem is that when a leader stands and is teaching, you know, when a leader stands there, some people just put that, no, okay, you know, these are the leaders and we are here. If we say now, they won't hear. No, that's a lie. Every time you've said, we've heard. Every time you've said, we've heard. Every time you've said, we've heard. So where do we get that? If we say now, they will say, somebody say, kill that. No, wherever anybody comes with that kind of thing, kill it. Kill it. And say, no, they will listen to you. They always listen to us. Even when they tell you, oh, maybe it's only you they listen to. No, they listen to everybody. We listen to you and you and you and you and you. I don't even know why this has brought us here. Okay. Let's go back to Soa. <laughs> Farmer. <laughs> Hallelujah. We listen to everybody. We listen to you and to you and to you and to you and to you. Even things that people will just tell me out of the blues. Pastor, do it. don't you think we should do this? I go and think and I go come back. Say, so well, I've done, I've done that. There was something I, I was not supposed to do today. I called Aunt Sister Jillian. I said, Sister Jillian, I did this, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. She was like, ah, thank you, Pastor. There are some, there's nothing. Nothing. Because when you tell us what is good, we will do it. Because it's a good thing. Amen. If you love your pastor, you will care for them. You will tell them good things. You will tell them what is good for everybody. You not sit somewhere and say, you know, I don't know if they will listen to me. They never. Since when did we never listen to you? Amen. Hallelujah. Of course, if you say something that is faithless, you can bet yourself we're not going to take that. That is the only time Pastor Ishola will not listen to you. If you say something faithless, completely faithless, because he's a man of faith. If you walk out of flesh, if you're walking in flesh and speaking in flesh, talking in flesh, the last time somebody told him not to set up rock solid, that he didn't think it was time. God was asking us to do rock solid. Five years later, the guy came back to him and said he wants to go and help and teach young people. Pastor said, eh. <laughs> and then he said, Pastor said, remember when we were about to set off? <laughs> you said, no, it wasn't. He was like, this is so good. Look at young people. He went for one program on campus. He saw young people. <laughs> Oh, pastor said, wow, look at young people. You know, we can do this. We can teach them this. Pastor was just like, wow. <laughs> so
So when you come with flesh and faithlessness, we will not listen to you. But anything that you tell us, anything good, we will listen. Why won't we listen? Hallelujah. We will listen and we will do it. We will listen and we will wait before God, rather, and then do it. Amen. Oh, by the way, the, 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 the Monday morning altar that is meant to happen here, just to say it's going to happen on Thursday. Amen? Amen? It's going to happen on Thursday. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because we listen. Amen. We hear you. Somebody say, Pastor hears us. Oh, we hear you. It's only if you don't try. Then you won't try. You'll be out there imagining and assuming all things. No. Amen. Why are we still here? Let's move. <laughs> Let's move. Amen. Others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. A hundred of sixty, thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I'm going to just uh, say this and then we'll pick out two things and I'll close. Uh, I'm not going to uh, take time. But I, I know that this parable is, is an interesting one that um, it's important that we just, that we actually go back and study this parable because we will understand how this month has gone by the time we look back at this parable. Whatever you achieved in this month, whatever you got or didn't get, you, I want you to go back and review this parable. How did I sow? How was my heart? Let's look at what Jesus... Yeah, that's where we're going. How Jesus explained it. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? Oh my God, I love this. I love this. I just got something. Did you get this now? He wasn't even saying, why do you speak? They didn't ask him, why do you speak to us in parables? Come on. It was okay. They were fighting the corner of the multitude. So sometimes when you're fighting the corner of the multitudes, you need to know how to do it. Oh my God. This is so good. They said, they said why do you speak to them in parables? In other words, they're trying to tell Jesus that these people won't, don't understand these things you're saying. How, how are they going to understand this thing you're saying? When they don't even understand one plus one, how are you telling them 2A minus B plus 4A? How are you going from addition to algebra? When somebody does not even understand the basic building blocks of adding, and you're not talking algebra, it's not going to work. But Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, he said, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. Is somebody rejoicing right here? But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, saying, hearing you will hear and, and will not understand. And seeing, you will see and not perceive. And for the hearts of the people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes, they have closed. Lest they should see and with their eyes hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And, but you're thinking, but Jesus, what are you talking about here? Like, I thought you would have wanted this. I thought this was supposed to be, how are you going to send a prophet to deliver a message and do it hard? 
I think Jesus, prophet Isaiah, God, Jesus was saying, was trying to present, this is an irony. Is anybody getting this? They're like a hyperbole, all the English and literature people. That wants to get you thinking and challenge you to do the opposite. Amen. Jesus is trying to challenge us to do the opposite here. In other words, that's why I said to them in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. When he said, don't break up the fallow grounds. Don't st- sow on thorny places. After that, he then says, circumcise your heart. What is the connection between sowing on thorny ground, sowing on rocky? What's the connection between that and the heart? Somebody say, we're getting there now. Jesus said, in Jeremiah, he said, this is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Oh my God. So it's about the heart. Tell somebody it's about the heart. You didn't get hundredfold this month? Oh, they said it was month of reward, but nothing happened for you. They said it was month of harvest, nothing happened for you. They said it was month of abundance and prosperity, yet nothing happened to you. Tell somebody, check your heart. He said, plow the hard ground of your heart. There's no wonder he said, guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs 23. Is it 423 or 23? 4? 423, Bible scholars. Come on. Nobody's even correcting me. Thank you, sirs. And he said, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Jesus says to us, the seed, what Jesus is trying to explain to them. So he said, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but they didn't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we have, Jesus is talking about, this, this is not about seeing what, you know, Father, this is about Rema. This is about understanding, having revelation, per season, per season of God, what God wants for your life. This is about Rema. This is about walking in a revelation of God. Amen. So as we end this month, amen, we need to be saying, Father, what do you want for us in the next month? We need to be praying. How many have started praying for what he's going to talk to us about? Oh, God, thank you. That's right. Lord, what is the word? What are you going to be? What do you want us to focus on in August as a month, as a people? Amen. What would you? So as we end this and you're thinking and you're looking at your heart, looking at the field of your heart, the field of your life, really, because the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, to guard your heart... Because out of it are what? So your heart and the field of your life. Everything depends here. Hallelujah. But and then God gave the people the answer when he told Jeremiah. Ah, we need to be teaching Bible some fresh fire like this. Hallelujah. Hey, now even me, I'm enjoying the word. Amen. How many are enjoying the word? Amen. Hallelujah. He now told, see, 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 he now told, Jeremiah now said, oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, surrender your pride and power. Change your hearts before the Lord. All my anger will burn like an unquenchable fire because of all your sins. Hallelujah. But because we are people who are surrendered, we cannot experience that because we know what to do. We know what to do with our hearts. We know what to do with the field of our life. Hallelujah. Let's quickly read so that we can, I can uh, allow the next 10 minutes for, stop, for other things. Amen. 
Therefore, hear the parable of the sower, Jesus says. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in there. Somebody says about the heart. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. Somebody say wayside seed. But he who received the seed on stony places, rocky places, this is he who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy. Oh, it was great. How was the word today? Great. How was the word today? Awesome. Plenty of English. How was church today? Wow, fantastic. Ask them, what did they preach? Can't remember. It was hot. Ah, pastor was too hot. What did pastor say? Um... Have you seen that meme of that video going around of the beauty pageant Miss Nigerian girl that they asked, who is the vice president of Nigeria? Beauty pageant. Girl was empty. She said, first of all, she said, thank you for that question. <laughs> you would have thought she knew the answer. <laughs> thank you very much for that question. The president of Nigeria is Femi Obasanjo. The vice president, rather. <laughs> that was funny. What did they do in church today? How was church? It was hot. It's good. Pastor was on fire. What did they say? <laughs> Pastor D was just prophesying today. What did you get out of it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, this is he who received uh, 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 on stony places. He hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, excitement. Excitement is great, isn't it? Yet, he has no roots in himself. That is the problem. Excitement is not a problem. We need to be excited about the word. Hallelujah. But when you're excited about the word, you need to know. Wow, how was the word? Pastor Shola was hot today. Oh my God, the way Pastor James brought out the 10 virgin, uh, you know, ah, uh, you're hot, you love it, you're excited. It's like the way he just explained it. I just, I get it now. Uh -huh. You came to church. Not uh, stony, rocky. How was church? Great. Pastor, our church is so awesome. People were just dancing. Seriously? <laughs> is that what you came to do in church? Praise the Lord. <laughs> ah, and I love the way ah, the, the ladies in our church, they can dress. Ah, have you seen the ladies in our choir? Ah, when they all wear high heels. Their high heels are like this. <laughs> and it's so good. I just, in fact, I want to join that choir. So that me too, I can be wearing high heels. That's what you came to do in church. <laughs> but it's good. You know, it's good, ladies. Dress well. Hallelujah. Because of the way you look and the way you dress, people aspire to come to church. So at least let them rocky. One day you went out good ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. But who received but he who received the seed on stony places? hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. Oh, endures only for a while. Endures only for a while. It's a heart condition. It's a heart condition. Excited today, excited tomorrow. On Thursday, it doesn't happen. Everything. God has now become untrustworthy because it just didn't happen. No, no, that is rocky ground. That is rocky ground heart. Hallelujah. Endures only for a while. But when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, immediately they stumble. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word 
He hears it all right. And the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word. And he becomes unfruitful. Ah, no reward. They say July is the month of reward. But no reward for this person. Why? Thorny ground. Why? Thorny ground. Becomes unfruitful. Somebody say, God forbid. 23, he said, but he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces. Hey! Somebody say, my July, my reward. This is the reason why it went however it went. Hallelujah. I want you to be on your feet tonight. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. There's a couple more points, but we'll, yeah, hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand if that was a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We'll, we'll, we'll stop there. There'll be another time. Amen. That's how to be on time. <laughs> you don't just carry on even though you have stuff to still share. It's enough for today. We got enough. At the end of the day, is about the heart. But as I close and as we pray, I want you to bring to light what Jesus first said. When he first said, in the first few verses, he first said, listen. In, K- in KJV, he said, behold. In NLT, he said, listen. When he was talking to the people, he said, listen. So in, it's important. Your heart condition is determined by how you listen. Amen. But not only because how you listen, you know, not only because there's a difference between listen and hear. There's a difference between listening and hearing. So tonight we're going to pray. Because the difference is in listening. Jesus said, listen. A sower went out to sow. Listen. Then after those two or three verses, he now said, let him that has ears hear what? Hallelujah. So it means we need to hear, we need to listen here, and we need to take heed and obey so that our obedience can be complete. Amen. Begin to pray. Say, Father, help me. Help my heart. Help me to understand how to guard my heart. Help me to understand. Do you know what I think? Hallelujah. As we pray, do you know, I think the problem is not just, the problem is that in life, each and every one of us, when I was talking about the field of life, out of your heart are the issues of flows, the issues of life. The issues, everybody has issues of life. When you look at the field, but the, the, oh, the key to a hundredfold, the key to a hundredfold is obedience. The key to a hundredfold is preparation. And preparation requires listening and following instructions and obeying instructions. Pray tonight and say, Father. Because did you know that? Did you know that people that don't listen are rebellious? Do you know that if we don't listen, we will tend to be rebellious because we're actually not listening. And that's what Jesus was saying in Jeremiah. That's what it was, Jeremiah was saying to the people. God said, tell them to circumcise their hearts. Tell them to remove anger, remove pride, remove power, remove this, remove that. Circumcise, you know, circumcision in the old was a sign of the covenant. It was a a covenant pact, isn't it? The people needed to circumcise themselves to be able to come under God, to come into that covenant with God. In Jeremiah, that Jeremiah 4 verse 3, it said, circumcise your heart. After talking about plowing, not plowing on thorny. It's interesting how he chose. You know the thorny one is the cares of the world. Being choked and becoming unfruitful. It's interesting how Jeremiah, he didn't say say rocky, he didn't say wayside. It was the thorny heart. Because thorns would choke. Hallelujah. Pray tonight. Father, let my heart... Help me to circumcise my heart. So Jesus was saying, remove the foreskin of your heart. Circumcise your heart. Remove the thorns. Remove the thorns. Remove the thorns. And you don't have to do it alone. We are here. 
We are here to support each other. We are here to help each other because we must make heaven. We must meet the mark. We must receive a hundredfold. Father, thank you. We give you all the praise. Help us, Father God. Help us to have the right hearts, to, have, to circumcise our heart. Are you praying? Are you praying? Say, say, Lord, help me navigate the field of my life so that I can remove the rocks and the thorns and the dirt. Hallelujah. You are so awesome, Lord. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word tonight. We're walking in a new revelation of what your reward looks like, of what it means to enjoy your harvest. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you have dropped in us. We will never be cheated by the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.